Hello students, I am Harinder, having an experience of more than 20 years for training the students for CAT, ZAT and other competitive exams. Today we will discuss the strategy to crack quant and DI section of the ZAT exam. Now before we start solving a few of the previous year's questions, let's have a look on what have been the pattern of the ZAT exam in the last two years. Now students, just have a look. In the ZAT 2014, there were a total of 31 questions in this section. Out of that, 22 questions were on quantitative ability and there were 9 questions on data interpretation. Similarly, if you move for 2015, there were a total of 33 questions. Out of that, 25 questions were on quantitative ability, whereas there were 8 questions on data interpretation. Now students, a careful analysis can disclose you that in 2016 pattern, as there have been a reduction in the number of questions in total. So you may expect a slight difference in number of questions that is a total of 29 to 30 questions in this section. Out of that, you can expect 7 to 8 questions to be out of on data interpretation. Now, moving on students, let's have a look at the major areas covered in this, there have been regularly the questions on algebra, functions, number system, geometry, uh, arithmetic sequences, probability, tables, multiple graphs, profit loss, interest, and percentage. Now, these are the major areas from which the questions have been coming in this exam. Now, let's have a look on few of the questions which appeared earlier. Now, this is a question. Now, this was a simple AP question, the sum of the following series. Now students here you can see the last term is given to be minus 100. First term is given to be minus 64. You know L is A plus N minus 1 into T. Now students you solve this and get the value of N as 19. Now which is a formula that you apply while calculating the sum. The sum of first 19 terms will be, it is n by 2 into a plus l or l plus a students, one and the same thing here. And you solve this to generate the answer. This will come out to be 19 into minus 82. So students, you solve this, you get it as 1558. So it was a simple AP question. Now, let's go to the next one. This you can read, Ramesh plan to order a birthday gift. Now, these are the probabilities that he receives the gift within the stipulated time. And then, this was the question. Now, it says probability that his friend would receive the gift in time. Now, when would his friend receive the gift in time? If at least one of those delivers this on time. So that means the friend will receive the gift if at least one delivers, that probability can be found. That total probability, guys, you all know is equal to one minus the probability that none of them delivers it on time. So one delivering a is 0.6 so not delivering is 0 0.4 0 0.2 0 0.1 and 0.5 so if you solve it carefully students you can see 5 2 is a 10 4 is a 40 with four decimals so that becomes 1 minus 0 0.004 or the answer is point zero sorry point nine nine six right students so our answer in this case becomes this one so even this was a simple question if you know the basic idea of probability 
Now students, moving on. If you see this third question, now typically the students are afraid of graphs. It was a very simple question on graph students. This was the question there. And you have to find the equation of the graph shown below. Before we solve this, uh, let me give you a little analysis of the same here students. Just have a look. He has taken y axis on the vertical line, whereas Sorry, he has taken x axis on the vertical line, whereas y axis on the horizontal line. So what you usually take as x is y, what you take as y is x. So can you see here that usually this point students, we call the origin point, we call anything which appears on that at that point x is 0. So here we can say y is 0. So y is 0 on this line vertically and you can see for y is 0 the value of x is given to be here. Just have a look students and call it a little less than 20. Let me take it as minus 19. It is slightly above that minus 20 point. Now let's have a look at the options given. See students here, uh, you take x as minus 19, y has to come 0, not in this case. This will be very very big. If you take this, y as 0, x is not minus 40, even this gets rejected. If you take here, uh, y 0, x square, minus 19 square, very, very big, 361. Uh, again, this is negative, but it is not going to give us 0. And if you see here, students, you put y here as equal to 0, though a very careful and strategic point will be that if four options get rejected, you can mark the fifth option as the answer. But even if you put value here, students, this will make this as 0, this as 0 because y is 0. So x gets a value of minus 19. So this option becomes our answer. Right, students? Let's move on to the next question here. This one. Now there are four different positive integers. from 1 to 25 and you want to have the highest possible value of can you write it a plus b plus c plus d students and in the denominator it is a plus b plus c minus d now students carefully you see it's only d which has been subtracted rest r plus and you want to have the highest value so that means numerator you try to maximize and denominator you try to minimize and the best if you get it as 1. Because in that case, whatever is the numerator, the same becomes your answer. Can you see here that A plus B plus C here and D has been added and D has been subtracted. So let's try to see how can you maximize this. In any way, can you make the denominator as 1? You can surely make it as 1 so that you take a value for a plus b plus c and you subtract the highest possible that value from d which can be 25. So similarly can you say you can take here as 26 plus 25. So students you can see here it becomes 51 divided by 1. So your answer for this case shall become choice number 3 that is 51. Moving on the student Carefully, you can do this question without writing if you analyze it carefully. I hope you have read it. See, for three years, from 2004 to 7, you get an interest of 10,000. Now, for three more years, you have got a total accumulated interest of 25,000. Now, students, it will include the initial 10. It includes 10,000 on the same initial principle plus you are getting 5,000 more. This means 5,000 must be the interest earned on this 10,000 rupees. You know when compounding is done, you start generating earning interest on previous time periods interest. So if 5,000 is an interest on 10,000, what is the rate of interest? it becomes 50%. So if 10,000 is 50% of the principal in 2004, we know 10,000 is 50% or half of which value? It is of 20,000. So 20,000 becomes your principal. Right students, it's a damn simple question if done properly. This becomes our answer. Moving 
to the next question this one students now it was supposedly a tough question uh, divided by 3 4 5 6 a remainder of 2 you know the lcm of 3 4 5 and 6 is how much it is 60 now students you want a number which is a multiple of 60 and then you will add 2 in this and the second statement says it has to be divisible by 11 now it should be divisible by 11 now students one shortcut here you need not divide all the number the complete number by 11 just divide the first part that is this portion by 11 and you can see you are left with 5k plus 2 as you can subtract 11 5 the 6 55 from 60 now just keep on putting k you put 1 you get as 7 k you put 2 12 k you put 3 you get it as 17 the moment you put k as equal to 4 the number becomes 22 which is divisible right students so this is a first such number now carefully you can see you want to know sixth such number now because it has come and it is a multiple of 11 now k will come after a multiple of 11 only students 11 more k's so first k if that happens to be 4 you will add 11 in this students so it will be at 15 then 11 more it will become at 26 11 more 37 then it will be 11 more 48 then 11 more will become 59 that means for k value equal to 59 you will be able to generate the answer right students put k as 59 and get the answer okay next question it was a data set students just a hint is needed for that it was based on twitter there was a positive uh, tweets negative tweets and neutral tweets this was the table given for the number of votes and the number of tweets positive negative so obviously the remaining is the neutral ones now uh, as a question i know is based on that so if you try and get a neutral percentage students you can see it is 33 plus 35 this is 68.7 so roughly it is 31% this comes out to be 60 so it is 40% this comes out to be uh, 59 so this is 41% this is 66 roughly so maybe 33% and this is 62.5 so maybe 37.5% but the question is actually students uh this one which is the following received the maximum number of neutral tweets so students as we already calculated the data c so basically you can see the bottom d and e values are negligible relatively so we need not calculate the percentage a is 131 but it is 31% b you can see is relatively on the higher side value and you have to calculate the higher percentage of the same it is 40% whereas for c it is 96000 below that and it is given to be 41% now the percentage is almost the same but the absolute value is less so difference will not increase it will decrease rather so you can see without calculation that it will be highest in case of b right so this b shall become our answer right now let's go to the next question in this question students you can see the symbol this one symbol here is increased so if this is increased in the numerator this is multiplied in the denominator though it is multiplied but at the same time there is one more term which is added so its impact in the numerator will always be only of the multiplicative whereas in the denominator it will be something of the additive sort so the value of the fraction in general will always increase so the answer will be first option right moving on in this question professor sumans quizzes and her average is given for a grade it is more than equal to 90 for b grade it is 87 to 90 89 inclusive so see students uh, she gets 97 for
for A grade minimum and if 70, it will just manage a B. So what is the difference between the two? The difference between the two is of that 27 marks, whereas the grade in one case is 90 and in the other case it is 87. Mind it, just management, you just touch the borderline. So there is a decrease of 3 in the average and there is a decrease of 27 in total. So what is the number of cases which have been taken? It is 27 divided by 3, that is 9. So fourth option, 9 becomes your answer. Moving on, it's a simple question students based on odd and even terms. You can see here four terms of an AP is given. One term is given to be 17. There are two possible cases. One case is the difference is odd. If the difference happens to be odd, the terms will be even, odd, even, and odd. Now there are two odd terms and two even terms. So what can you say about their sum students? It will be definitely even. Similarly, if the difference happens to be even students, in that case, the all terms will be odd only and their sum even in that case will be even. So sum is even means it will always be divisible by 2. So first option, right? Moving on, in this case students, mind it, two values of x are lying, two equations in modulus. Mind it, they both cannot be uh, one positive and one negative because in case it is one positive and one negative, x will cancel themselves out. So if they both are positive, you solve it and you will get the value of x as 8.5. And in case they both are negative, the value of x that you generate here is minus 7.5. And the question talks about the sum. So what is the sum of positive 8.5 and minus 7.5? It is 1. That is the second option. Right, students? So you can solve and learn from what has been taught here. Now, these are the answers to these questions, followed by three more, 11 questions in total students. Uh, students, the way we covered quant and di, similarly, we have videos on uh, decision making, general knowledge, as well as verbal ability and language, right? So you can go through those videos. Thank you so much students. Happy learning.